In this video, I'm going to be setting up the TOPS network. I'll briefly introduce the principles of TOPS and then move on to preparing the base meshes with the tag attribute. Now that I've set up this network, I want to use a TOPNet to automate the process of loading in different uh, base mesh files, running it through the network, and saving out the maps and FBX. I'm going to come back up to the object level and create a top net. If you aren't familiar with tops, tops are task operators. We can generate work items and then these can carry out different tasks. If I just add a wedge and open up the properties window and I can set the wedge count to 10. And I'm going to right click on the wedge and click generate node. And that has generated these work items. Now these work items don't contain any information yet. A wedge just generates these empty task slots. If I link several wedges together. And come to the last wedge in the chain and right click and click cook node. And you can see when I cooked that node, it also cooked all of the upstream work items as well. This way we can chain nodes together and automate several tasks in order. If I select a single work item, then I can see the link between each of the work items on the upstream nodes. So we can have information passed from one task to the next. The local scheduler manages the running of these tasks. And so if I select this, we have some options here as well. Under total slots, the default is equal to one quarter of the total CPU count. And because I have 12 cores on my CPU, that means I'll be able to run three work items at once, which is great. It means that we can process this much faster because we can run multiple work items at once, but it does mean that's going to use more uh, memory. So you can, Customize the number of slot counts you want to run at once. And you can also, under job parameters, check single here, which will run just a single work item at once. So there's a few options to bear in mind. If you do stop running out of memory, you can choose to just run one work item at once. Before I begin building this top net, I'm going to want to make some changes to the network that I created. And I'm going to explain why. So currently, with the way the network is set up, what I'm going to do with top net is create a work item for every single one of my base meshes, and then load them into Houdini, run them through the network, and save for each work item three outputs, the two maps and the FBX file. Now, that means when I load a file and then I generate a work item to save a, this mask map, it will load the file, run it through the network, do the remeshing, the edge damage, displacement using the different noises, uh, the same for the metal, run the poly reduce, generate the UVs, generate the curvature and amplification masks, and then save it to disk. Then I'll have a work item to save the ID map. And it will do the same. It will load the file, run it through the rain mesh grid, edge damage, poly reduce, UVs, save the ID map. And then the same again for the FBX. And it will do that for every single one of the work items for they created when loading in the base meshes. So now that's obviously a lot of um, unnecessary rerunning of the network. So what I'm going to do is introduce a step where at the end of this network before we save the maps and the fbx file is save a cached version of the geometry so that means when i generate a work item to save the maps and the fbx rather than running the entire network it will simply load the cached file and save the outputs and that will save rerunning this network for each of the outputs so i'm going to split up this network At the end here, I'm going to add a null. 
and call this out process. I'm then going to select all of these nodes here below the null and cut those. So that's control X or cut from the edit menu. Create a new geometry node. And inside here, paste those nodes. And now add a file node, connect it to the measure curvature, the null for the ID map and the attribute delete. Now let's come to the object level and I'm going to name these geometry files. So the first one I'm going to call props process. And the second one props game export. And I'm going to make a third geometry node and call this props base mesh. And in the props base mesh, I am going to process and set up the base meshes that I need to load into the top net to create the work items. So let's come back into the props process node and I'm going to copy the file node, the name node and this attribute wrangle and paste them into the props base mesh graph. So I have one base mesh set up, this large headstone, but I need to do this for all of the other headstones as well, because I need to process them and set them up with these tags in order to run them through the network. So it's going to be a small amount of manual setup, but it will allow me to automate the rest of the process. In preparation of loading in the files, I'm going to add at the bottom here another name node. And the attribute I'm going to create is going to be called file name. And I'm going to type in headstone underscore dollar OS. And if I middle mouse click on the name label, we can see that dollar OS variable is being resolved to the name of the node. So if I now name this node large01, we can see that name has updated to headstone large01. And I'm going to use the same variable on the file node. So in place of the file name, I'm going to type $OS. Keep the file extension. And if I middle mouse click, you can see file01 because that's the name of the node. So if I now rename this to headstone large 01, that's now resolved to the name of the file and loaded in. But if I now select all of these nodes and alt click and drag, that's copied those nodes. The name of this file node has updated to large 02, which is the name of my second model, and load it in. It's also updated the name of this name node. And so I can see the file name attribute is also updated. So I'm going to continue to do this for the rest of my files. We've got an error because I don't have a headstone large 04. So I'm going to rename this to small 01. And I'm going to do the same on this name node. Small 01. Just verify that's working. Small 01, and that's the name of the file. And repeat the process for our remaining small headstones. There we go. So that's all of my files and I've applied an attribute to each of these nodes called file name. And I'll be using this later when I come to saving all of these base meshes to disk. I'm going to now add a switch node and select all of these name nodes and connect them to this switch. And then connect this switch to the attribute wrangle. Now, if I switch between these, that will update. Now you can see I need to set up 
tag attribute for each one of these files. So let's quickly do that now. Let's come back to Headstone Large 02. So I'm going to update the group selection for this stone. Let's double click on the stone area on the stone geometry to select it. Hit return and then box select the metal areas and then hold control and double click the stone to deselect it. And repeat the process for the remaining headstones. Now that's done. I'm actually going to delete all of these exploded views apart from this one. Let's shake it free and place it after this attribute wrangle. And I'm just going to quickly inspect them to make sure they're all applied correctly by just switching through the switch node inputs. That looks like that's all been set up correctly. Now I'm going to add, after the switch node, an attribute promote. And I want to promote this file name attribute, which is set to primitives. So I'm going to select the original class to primitives and then select that file name attribute. And I'm going to promote that to a detail attribute. After the attribute promote, I'm going to add a ROP geometry output. I'm going to call this save base mesh. And I want to save this into the geometry folder and then into a subfolder called props base mesh. And for the file name, I'm going to write an expression that will reference this file name attribute. That I've just promoted to detail. So I'm going to write backtick and then type detail s open brackets. So this attribute returns the string value of a detail attribute. First of all, I need the surface node that I want to reference the detail attribute from. I'm just referencing the input to my node. So I'm going to type zero, comma, and then it needs the name of the attribute. So add a quotation mark and then type the name of the attribute, which is file name. Close quotation marks, close brackets, close backticks, and then type the file extension. It's going to be .bgeo. Now for our middle mouse click, we can check that file name. And there we go. We can see it's pulling in that name from that detail attribute. So this way, when I switch between these nodes, this file name will update. Now my first use of a TopNet is going to be automating the process of updating the switch and saving out the geometry. So let's come back up to the object level into the TopNet and I'm going to add a wedge. I can manually set the wedge count, but I'd rather it was automated. Rather than keeping switching backwards and forwards between these different networks, I'm going to add an additional tab and I'm going to pin this view. Now on the first tab, I'm going to navigate back to my props base mesh geometry node. And now I have two tabs where I can quickly switch between my geometry nodes and the top net. And I'm going to write an expression to set my wedge count. So I'm going to type op n inputs, open brackets, and this expression returns the maximum number of connect inputs. So if I type forward slash obj forward slash, you can see here we've got a list of my geometry nodes. I want to go into the base mesh, and if I start typing switch, we can see that switch node. So if I select that, and then close quotation marks, close brackets. And now that wedge count is set to seven, which is the total number of inputs on this switch node. So now if I add any additional models, 
or remove any, this wedge count will automatically update. And if I click cook node, it will always ensure that I have the correct number of work items for the inputs on my switch node. Now, the next thing I want to do is link this wedge node to my switch. So for each work item, it will update the switch. If I middle mouse click on one of these work items, we can see some information about it. We can see some attributes here, wedge count, wedge index, wedge num, wedge total. And these are attributes on these work items. And if I swap between the different work items, we can see for this first work item, the wedge index is zero. For the second item, the wedge index is one, wedge index two, and so on, right up to the last one, which is wedge index six. Now these attributes are global attributes, so I can use them anywhere else in the network. So if I come back over to my props base mesh node and on my switch, in the select input, I'm going to type at wedge index. And now as I come back over to the top net and swap between these work items, we can see that wedge index is updating and updating the switch, switching through my different base meshes. Next, I'm going to add a ROP fetch. And this will fetch another ROP node from somewhere else in the network. So in the ROP path, if I start typing obj forward slash then again, we can see the different geometry nodes. I want to go into the base mesh. If I start typing save, then we can see that save base mesh node. So double click that. That is now the path to this save base mesh geometry output. So now when I cook this ROP fetch, it will run this geometry output node and save each of my geometry files. So let's do that now. Right click on the ROP fetch and click cook node. And we can see that's cooking. It's currently cooking three work items. We have four work items left to complete. So the wedge is updating the switch and then the ROP fetch is saving the geometry to disk. We've got a warning here, which says multiple work items list the same file as their expected output. So this group fetch um, is, is unaware that this file name is updating for each work item. But although it's showing a warning, if I check my geometry folder and come into prop base meshes, I can see those files saved to disk. And I can also check those work items by right clicking on one of the work items and clicking view work item output. And then that loads that file in. Let's close that and check another work item. And there we go, we can see that saved correctly to disk. So it looks like this is all working correctly. With the base meshes prepared and saved, in the next video I'll move on to setting up the rest of the TOPS network that I'll use to load in these prepared base meshes and begin automating the process of generating the final game ready assets.